really just to get everything out in the open. This is done, of course, under the authorship of the eldership here. Everything is to be done in keeping with Christian decorum. And keep in mind that we, the elders, uh, have delegated to David to moderate this open discussion, open forum. Yet we still retain the ultimate authority here. And uh, when there's a question that may arise, uh, we will decide. So keeping that in mind, I'd like to turn the, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to have a prayer by Bruce Stilton. And then as soon as Bruce finishes with a the prayer, then uh, David will take over the uh, moderation of the open forum. Bruce? <coughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before thee this afternoon. We're thankful for this open forum, the opportunity we have to discuss doctrinal issues that divide the church. We're saddened, Heavenly Father, by this division that's occurred. We pray, Heavenly Father, that things that will be said here would help to resolve those issues, restore unity among some brethren and throughout the brotherhood. We pray also, Heavenly Father, for those that refuse to be here, even though they were invited, they've been invited several times. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that this open forum would serve to encourage others to come forward and defend their beliefs and open, honest debate. We might be able to get to the heart of the matter that divides the church at this time. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those that participate in this open forum, that they would do so in a godly way, remembering that they're Christians, they represent Christ in this blessed church. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as we discuss these things, we would seriously consider what the Bible has to say about the issues at hand, and that we would let those things revealed in your word decide the day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love and the providence that's brought us here today. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we would make the most of this opportunity, that we might be able to glorify you, that we might start a healing process in the church. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen. Well, we want to begin today uh, allowing anyone to come up and ask whatever question they would like to ask. And I think probably Rodriguez would like to be the first ones to do that, and I have no problem with that. And so if you would like to come up and pose whatever it is you'd like to, we'd be glad to have you come up at this microphone. If you would, identify yourself. Yes, sir. My name is Brother Israel Rodriguez, gospel preacher for the Northern Street Church of Christ in Corpus Christi, Texas. I also labor with the Adams Street Church of Christ in Beeville, Texas, and with the Freer Church of Christ in Freer, Texas. I want to begin at the outset by thanking Almighty God for bringing us to this place safe and sound. I would also like to thank the elders of the Spring Church of Christ, along with my esteemed brother, Brother David P. Brown, for the invitation to come and to participate in the open forum of the 2008 Spring Contending for the Faith Lectureship. I would like to publicly declare that the Rodriguez family holds no animosity toward any man or woman here today. We have come simply in the interest of truth for truth is the basis of all Christian unity. We present ourselves today in an effort for peace. For the scriptures declare, if it be possible as much as in you lieth, be at peace with all men. Our fear, however, is that in our pursuit of peace our motives have been misapprehended, and now we stand in the sight of some as false brethren who no longer earnestly contend for the faith which was once for all delivered unto the saints. From childhood our Father taught us to fear God and keep his commandments. 
It was the prayer of our mother that we would become servants in the kingdom of God, and both are with us here today. And with the help of God, through the power of his word, coupled with the guidance, love, and fervent prayers of our parents, we are what we are today, gospel preachers seeking and striving to maintain a consistent level of righteousness. In stating our case, we will specifically identify the individual or individuals that we have, that have to do rather with the matter. In calling a brother's or sister's name, we are not stating that we have ought against that specific brother or sister unless otherwise stated. It may be also from time to time that in stating our case it will be necessary for us to emphasize a particular point. This is not to be translated as hatred or ill will for our brethren, but urgency in resolving the matter before us. Having now concluded these preliminary remarks, this is my first question. It is based upon a proposition that I have developed. It reads simply, Brother Lynn Parker made a false statement and accusation about the Rodriguez brothers on January 21, 2008 on the contending FTF Yahoo Group's website which caused Brother Daniel Denham to make a false accusation and also statements about the Rodriguez brothers on the CFTF Yahoo Group's website, one on January 21, 2008, the other on January 22, 2008. This in turn caused Brothers Wayne Blake, David P. Brown, Frank Carriger, Daniel Cole, Don DeLong, Dennis Francis, Michael Hatcher, Doug Post, Keith Sisman, and Kevin Townsend to make false accusations and statements about the Rodriguez brothers on both of the aforementioned websites. I would like to read just a brief quote from the web page containing FTF website where Lynn Parker writes these things and this is what he says. He makes the statement, now where are all those Metter supporters? And then he goes into this statement, and you timid souls that refuse to consider evidence and take a stand against Dave Miller apostasy and arrogance hour are learning, are you learning anything from any of this? If brethren will not turn to the left or the right on one issue, what keeps them from walking into other errors? Why, it wasn't too long ago that a couple of young men at Deville decided to make a little trip to see Metter and get ammo to defend Dave Miller. Surely the Rodriguez boys will speak up any moment now. Now, Brother Lynn Parker is not here, and so he cannot come up and speak for himself, but we do have the statement that led to Daniel Denham. And Brother Denham is here, and perhaps he will come forward and clarify his statement. This let, is, let, me, let me interrupt you a minute. Yes, sir. Uh, what is the contention? What is the problem? What was it that was said that was wrong? In the proposition that I read, he made a false statement and accusations about us. What was it that he that he said that was false? Did you go up and, and, and visit with Joe Metter? Yes, I did. Did you but, ask him questions? What was that all about? Okay. In, in visiting Brother Metter, we had something in view. Well, what was and, it was something in view? And what we had in view was to clarify a public allegation concerning himself made by Brother Kevin Townsend, who then was a member at Shenandoah and then recently after that left to New Braunfels. Okay, now Brother Townsend is here. Okay. So since it all goes back to something he said as to the basis if you're going to meet Brother Metter, am I right? Is that right on something he said that you caused you all to go up there and visit with him? Well, the, the, the point of contention is the fact that Lynn Parker said that we went to see Brother Joseph Miller to get ammo to defend Dave Miller, and we deny that. Okay. We did not go to see Brother Miller to get ammo to defend Dave Miller. Okay, what did you go up there to see him about? Well, we went to go to clarify those things that Brother Townsend had publicly alleged about him. Well, what did Brother Townsend say that muddied the waters that need to be clarified? Well, he said that 
Well, there's, there's really four different things that he said, and we summarized Brother Kevin Townsend's packet into four different questions. But before we actually get into that, we want to make the point clear that it all began with words spoken by the mouth of Lynn Parker. And what he said was that we went up to see Joseph Metter to get ammo to defend Dave Miller, and that is inaccurate. Okay, well now, then what was it that... The, the, the fact that he said we went to see him to get ammo to defend I understand him. That. I understand that, but what was it that you went up there to get? Well, I, I, I cannot explain that until we get to that point. The first point that we need to clarify is that Brother Lynn Parker made an inaccurate statement on a public website. He stated it as a fact, and in reality it was not a fact. It was not a fact. And that's what we want to clarify. Now, since Lynn Parker is not here, we wanted to go to, to Brother Daniel Denham because his accusation is a little bit more detailed and a little bit stronger that he has publicly charged us with sin, which sin did not exist because we never went to see Joseph Metter to get ammo to defend Dave Miller. That is an inaccuracy. Okay, whatever you need to say. Dad, hold on. Go go ahead. You just go ahead and explain. The, we, I just want to try to get us down to the very point where the, we see what you're well, saying I, regarding I, what you said. I thought I thought I'd made myself very clear. The, the point of contention is that an that a false statement has been made. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, Lynn. Uh, you got me up here. This is David. Do you have a speaker on that? Yes, Frank Carringer's here. He has a speakerphone. Uh, is this is this speakerphone? Hang, hang on a minute, Lynn. Is this speakerphone? <laughs> it's a telephone. <laughs> Mine is that his isn't. Mine is that yours is not. I'm sure. I'm sure if it's a, if it's a newer model, it should have a speaker. Can you say something? Oh, okay. All right, speak clearly because you're on speakerphone. I'm going to put you on the microphone. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, turn your radio down. Turn your radio down. Frank Carragher is there to make sure he's correct. It is. That's true. Okay. And at least, uh, now, you can get Frank Carragher to answer this question. I mean, if Frank was lying to me, which I don't believe if Frank Carragher would lie to me or anybody else. But the fact of the matter is, the question needs to be asked is, whenever they went up there, did they come back and report to Frank that they were essentially got a clean bill of health? That they had information from their discussion with Joseph Metter that uh, uh, they were was now okay? That's just a simple yes or no? No, that's incorrect. Okay. Did you hear that? When, when Frank Carragher must have imagined all of this in his mind, is that correct? Then Frank Carragher misinformed him. That is correct. Okay. And you can come back and, and show Frank Carragher uh, a letter from Joseph Miller and also refer to the fact that Joseph Miller said he had a letter from Dave Miller and that uh, Dave Miller wouldn't teach him this. And Frank Carragher didn't want to tell you, look, he would have uh, been at different times the food that either Dave Miller had repeated or that uh, Dave Miller had nothing to repent of. The uh, uh, testimony about that, and then uh, Frank asked him, why, if, if it didn't mean anything wrong, why would you need to repent? Now, did any conversation like that occur? No, it did not. The, uh, Jos okay. the Joseph... Well, I guess you're going to have to ask Frank Carver. Uh, well, he's standing right behind him. Yes. So he, he's ready to answer that, and that gets right back. You said you wanted... Uh, and here's another thing, David. I guess the bottom line gets back down to me, so she's here. Ask 
Kim if he verified what Frank Carragher told him. Did you hear that? Did you verify what Frank Carragher told you? I'm sorry, what now? Did you verify what Frank Carragher reported to you, what he told you? Well, I remember since you had a minute to Shannon Bill and turned on the lecture shit. They better because they are. I mean, I've watched them on the Shannon Bill and lecture shit. So, no, he did not. Shannon Bill and lecture shit lying? Did they not take a position that all of you men were under control shit? So, no, he did not. That's a separate issue. We well, let's let brother. I tell you what, let's do. Let's let brother Carringer say what he wants to say because that's where it all goes back to. Is that you? Hang on, million, because brother Carringer's up here. I am Frank Frank Carringer from Skidmore, Texas, formerly of Adam Street Church of Christ of Beeville. I couldn't understand everything y'all were talking about, but I believe it was on a Monday morning that Joshua Israel come to my house. We had been having a discussion with the fellowship of Dave Miller. They said they had talked to Dave Miller on the telephone and that Dave Miller had repented. I, in turn, showed them the material that Kevin Townsend had put together on the Gestalt and the Yogi stuff. They said, we're going to see Joseph Smith tomorrow. They did. They come back on Wednesday night. I believe Ezra told me, he said, I got a letter here you're going to be really happy to see. Well, fast had started, so I didn't get to read it until afterwards. And I thought to myself, well, you don't have nothing. We had a signed letter by the three Rodriguez, Eddie and the boys, and Joseph Miller, saying that the consult business had been only for educational purposes. I thought, well, that's strange. I knew about it for years. He was involved in it, 40 years of study. He ought to know about it by then. <laughs> okay, so we talked about that in, in the letter. So my wife and I called a meeting with the elders, Gordon Marr, Walter Ellick, and Joshua. And we discussed what fellowship consisted of. I looked Gordon Moore right straight in the eye. Joshua has to confirm it. And I said, is Dave Miller a false teacher? Gordon said, yes. Well, Joshua did, I, did not defend Dave Miller that night. Well, a few days later, I said, well, I won't have nothing more to say about it. A few days later, they announced from the pulpit that they were going to the Shenandoah Lectureship and have fellowship specifically with Joseph Meta and Robert Taylor, Jr. I went back to the elders, and I said, Lord, and I said, this is not going to work. I said, I talked to you the other night about fellowship. Gordon said, don't worry about it. Frank said, I'll take care of you. And so the taking care of was that they went on to Shenandoah Lectureship and participated in the lectureship with known people who fellowship Dave Miller. Okay, so I, I had told Gordon, I said, you know, Gordon, if they go, Grace and I might have to withdraw our membership here. Joshua said, well, you threaten me. I said, no. That was not a threat, that was a statement. And that's all it was. But it turned out to be that we withdrew our membership there. Because that was in violation of God's word to have fellowship with those who fellowship a false teacher. And then Lynn wrote a few things. I don't know whether it's time to bring this up or not. I called, I believe Israel was when I spoke. I said, I'd like to meet with y'all. So I went to Beeville on a specific day, as time, and Eddie and Joshua and Israel come walking across the parking lot. We went into Joshua's office, and they said, well, what do you want? I said, well, you know, I said, this division has got me troubled. I said, Isaiah said, Isaiah 1 and 18, come and let us reason together. I said, you know, the only time we'll ever get this settled 
is to sit down and talk. Get some of these things out of the way. Well, what do you want to talk about? I said, well, we can talk about anything. We can talk about the fellowship work. We can talk about what you have against David Brown and Lynn Parker or whatever you want to talk about. Let's get it out. Let's talk about it. I, Ariel said, all you want to do is see us get whooped like a dog and run out of here with a tail between our legs. I said, the truth has nothing to fear. And so, I don't know, I don't remember exactly the rest of the conversation, and I seen that this was going nowhere. And I got up to leave, and I, and I just said, well, y'all think I'm a working for the devil. Israel, I believe, I don't know, it's either Israel or Joshua, said, yeah, you're working for the devil. I walked out, and that was it. <clears throat> now, if they have another question to ask me, I might have a question to ask them. I've seen on this same content, uh, website. Well, before we go to that issue, I have a couple of points that Brother Brown originally made. And the point was, what is our contention? I stated that our contention was that the information that Lynn Parker put on the contending FPS website was inaccurate as far as the mentioning of the fact that we went to see Joseph Miller to get ammo to defend Dave Miller. I deny that. Now, in your well, wait, opinion, just, just, just a minute. Uh, we can't. First of all, we need to be closer to the microphone. But let's let's let him finish what he's doing, and you feel free to come. Well, right. so he's going to a separate issue. Well, well, I just what you got. There. I just said, well, I'll stop right there. Then I just won't thought, well, I'll just get rid of what I got. Well, well you, you might need to come back. A okay, later, so okay, I'll come back one, one I'll step at a time. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. I want to reiterate that Brother Carragher, and I didn't hear him if, if he did, did not clarify for us whether or not what he told Lynn Parker was accurate or not. And I, I deny that it was. It, it was not accurate. Whatever Frank Carragher told Lynn Parker, and I wasn't there, of course, but I do know that Lynn Parker made a statement. And I can base a conclusion off of that statement. And my conclusion is, as I infer it, that whatever Frank Carragher told Lynn Parker was inaccurate if he concluded that we went to see Joseph Metter to get ammo to defend Dave Miller. That was not the case at all. Is that exactly what you said? No, I don't, I don't believe I said he went. Come on back up here. <laughs> Hang on there. Why don't you, uh, Bruce, won't you let him sit closer where you want to I, I, I do not believe that, uh, that I said he went to get ammo to defend Dave Miller. But that brought another thought to my mind. Well, let's, let's hang on that right now, bro, on that one thing. Let me respond now. Please, if I can. Yeah, just, just stand right there. Brother Frank Carragher has just admitted that he did not say that to Lynn Parker. Therefore, what Lynn Parker has said was inaccurate, and our case stands on that point. Okay, now, since you did not go up, oh, go ahead. All right. Remember I said this, that when they come to my house, they said that Dave Miller had said he had repented on the telephone to them. Joshua, I believe. But when they come back with this letter concerning the assault, Joshua told me, said, I seen a letter on to Joseph Netta from Dave Miller saying he had never taught this. That's R&R. &R. I said, well, what did he repent of? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Again, the, the facts are completely skewed. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand how he could have got that, but Dave Miller is an issue that we're going to get to. Well, we're, we will, we're gonna, we're we gonna, will gonna, if we have time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we will if we have time. We have three days, and I don't know yeah. if y'all want to if y'all want to dedicate all three days. But oh, fine, eventually, yeah. we will get to discussing and fully disclosing everything that we believe about Dave Miller. And so, right now, I want to make it known to this audience and these groups of preachers here that Lynn Parker made a false statement about me, and that has already been clarified. Now, either Brother Parker needs to apologize and publicly repent, repent for that false statement, or we can no longer go further with these proceedings. I don't, 
I'm not in a position to say one way or the other. It's going to have to come from the state. Once we deal with this issue, we'll go to Brother Denham. Because, well, because, because we'll, 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 well, 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 with your with your all's approval, we'll go to Brother Denham. What you're saying is that you're going to set the agenda, and you well, are this, uh, well, is this unreasonable? What we're what we're suggesting? The fact of the matter is, let's just assume for a moment that uh, Lynn is just as wrong and just as sinful as anybody could be. There's still the issue of why did you go up okay. to talk to And this is why. This and is exactly what is your uh, feeling or thought or feeling, whatever it is, of David Miller and his uh, teaching. Yes, sir. And this is why we presented ourselves here. We're, we're, we're prepared to spend all three days. Well, let me, let me say that okay. these are. Uh, I think you have uh, characterized as separate issues, yes. and we will deal. We will deal with these as separate issues. Yes, sir. But one is not dependent on the other. Yes, sir. So if if we cannot settle the matter of Lynn Parker, we can just say that he's uh, this is guilty can be. Well, we can say that we, because uh, we've already heard it from Brother. Uh, I'm saying we can say Hager's that, mouth that he did not say that. We can say that, uh, you know, that he is. And I know that Lynn, that if he is, and if he is convinced that he is, he will repent. Okay, well, we have witnesses, and so okay. on the on the morrow, when Brother Parker gets but here... But the condition, the other discussion on that is not reasonable. Which, which condition? The condition of what were you doing in Austin? Okay. Uh, and what is your... What do you consider the teaching of David Miller to be? Is it false or not? And is okay. he a false teacher and has your opinion? Okay. So, and um, I, I, I don't want you to get the No, no, no I, I accept I accept what you say, but yeah. I don't want you to get in the position of the um, okay. Yes sir. The 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 outline we were following was the invitation that that Brother David Brown sent us. Brother David Brown sent this invitation to us uh, on the email and Brother Brown specifically outlined what, what we would be discussing. He stated, first of all, our belief on Matthew 18, 15 through 18. Then he went on to discuss uh, Joseph Metter, Dave Miller, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the outline that we were following. That's fine. Uh, and, and so, you know, that's why we wanted to deal with one issue at a time. And before we go to the next issue, we want to know if the first issue has been resolved. Well, as far as I can see, there's only way that we can have anything resolved is when Lynn gets here to do whatever he's going to do one way or the other. Let me make a suggestion. I just talked to Lynn, asked him what he's going to be here, and he said he'd be here about noon tomorrow. And it's very difficult to to do this uh, remotely. Yes, this, sir. So this part of the discussion, let's defer until tomorrow. We'll okay. Again tomorrow. That's acceptable to us. Okay. Now, so since we're deferring that until tomorrow. Yes, sir. Let's get back to the matter of, of uh, Joseph Vedder. Yes, sir. And I'll let you go ahead and take it. I agree yeah, with that. If you, wanna, yeah, if you want to ask a question that will, <laughs> are you going to ask a question that will lead into my discussion, Joseph Vedder, or would you like me just to fully disclose? Well, I think it's already been introduced, the fact that uh, uh, the, you went up there to visit with him. Yes, sir. And you had a reason to go up and visit yes, with him. Yes, sir. And thus, you had the reason, so you went and you found out something, and we already know there was a letter that he, that you came back with yes. that uh, he allowed for your eyes only or whoever you showed it to, but there could be no copies made of it. So that, I'm not, am I right? No. Okay, well, go ahead and explain. Okay. It. This all began with Brother Frank Carriger introducing us to the entire Dave Miller issue. And this began a little around a year ago, a year and a half ago, so we're fairly new to the R&R doctrine as it is stated or the MDR intent as it is stated. But when he began to introduce these things, we asked him for evidence. He did not have any at the time. He deferred us to articles that had been published in the Continuum for the Faith. And we said, well, we don't take that magazine, and we don't, you know, we know people who do, and we'll, we'll look into that. But there was, yes, sir. <laughs> and there was, no, there was no evidence submitted at that, at that moment. And so there was not a big deal made about it until Brother Carragher heard that we were going to Shenandoah last year. Now, when he heard that, he, he immediately pinpointed Joseph Metter and Robert Taylor, as he stated, but it was more on Joseph Metter because around that time, Brother Kevin Townsend had put out 
his uh, his packet against uh, a public allegation against Brother Metter. So he invited us out to his house. Uh, he put before us a 12-page packet. Later, we learned that there were there were actually 121 pages, or, or roughly about. When he put that packet before me, compiled by Brother Kevin Townsend, then Joshua and I were flabbergasted. We we had never heard this. We had never seen this. Uh, later, we found out that it had recently surfaced, and we were ready to go to Shenandoah and mark Brother Joseph Metter publicly if what Brother Kevin Townsend had compiled proved to be true and accurate in all regards. So the next logical reason for us to take in pursuing this matter, after hearing Brother Carragher, uh, we went and spoke to Brother Kevin Townsend, not personally, but over the phone. I called him the very next day to get his perspective on the matter concerning Joseph Metter. Now, I spoke to him roughly about 45 minutes. He gave me the entire rundown about why he put together this packet and this packet's purpose. I listened to him. He told me uh, the story about Shenandoah, uh, about an elderly woman coming to him, asking him about Joseph Metter. He didn't know, so he said, I'm going to investigate. He tells me about the Wayback Machine. After I hear all of this, I tell Brother Townsend, I'm going to go talk to Brother Metter to find out what he says about this, because this is compelling. This is, this is something that needs to be responded to, what you have put together. And he goes, he goes you make sure you hold his, his feet to the fire. I said, oh, oh, we will. We're going to ask him directly how he responds to these charges. And so uh, I asked him, just before I hung up, I asked him, have you spoken to Brother Metter? And he says, no, I have not, and I don't need to because uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 tells me, and he, he gave his uh, interpretation of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, which I believe is inaccurate, but we'll talk about that as time permits and as that comes up. But here it is, a man put together 121 pages against uh, another brother. Brother Israel, look, yes, yes, we've got him here. Okay. You can lecture. We're not here to lecture. I understand you want to make your explanations, and I appreciate yes. that. But we can ask some questions and get down okay. to the nitty-gritty pretty fast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, where do you stand on Joseph Metter now? Joseph Metter is a fallen-away Christian. Okay. And now, he has you said you went up there to ask him and get information from him. Yes, and, sir. And uh, you came away. Here's the letter. Okay. You came away with that letter. This letter was never secret. And that is the contention. Well, we never, I, no, I never heard it was secret. Person. Well, I, I heard, heard it was not allowed to be copied and handed around. Well, that's, what I said that's not the language that's on the public websites, and I have copies of all those websites. All the, the posts that were made, Brother Denham and others specifically state that this was a secret letter, when in fact we told Brother Carragher and Brother Townsend that anyone could see this letter with their own two eyeballs. Well, Brother But we were not going to make copies of it, so... Uh, the why, why, would you, why wouldn't you make copies? Because we, Joshua, my father, and myself, made a pact with him saying that since this is an issue that deals with the Adam Street Church of Christ, Brother Carragher and Brother Townsend, that we were not going to publicize this unless he saw fit to publicize it. I told him specifically, and I have witnesses to prove it, we're not going to fight your battles. Now, these things have been brought up against you. You need to go out there and answer the brethren. And he says, well, I'm a pacifist. Well, he's more than that. Well, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Oh, yes, it is, because well, you're trusting in whatever he told you on that day, and it's obvious he's a proven liar. Well, that was after the case. Well, you, I know you, it, but any time, you know, if I go up and ask you, are you a faithful gospel preacher? What do you think the rule Shelley's is going to say? No, I'm not. I'm a false teacher. I teach error, and you believe me, you go to hell. Well, well he, no, you're not going to say that, and he's not either. Well, he said that once. He said he was going to hell? No, he said he was a false teacher. That, that He said that he would, probably would not be the best person to be asking this when the whole Winkler thing came out, and they questioned him. He said, I'm not the, the, the brother you probably need to be asking about how we describe the Churches of Christ. Who, Metter said that? No, no, no. Shelley. Shelley said, okay. Yeah, okay. Rubble Shelley uh, implicitly said that he well, was not a true, sound Christian. Well, not from the standpoint of the New Testament doctrine, but from his perspective of what he is and ought to be, I think he thinks he's very sound. Well, the, the fact of the matter is these things about Joseph Metter came later. At the time we were talking to him, we had no knowledge of what he was doing behind the scenes. But some of us did. Well, no, you did not. 
You didn't, know, you didn't know that he was living in adultery. I didn't say anything about that. I said I knew what he believed regarding his gestalt philosophy, and if he follows his philosophy, he's free at liberty to do a lot of things he was doing and is doing and is proven that he did. You didn't know that. Yeah, well. You did not know yes, that. Yes, I did, sir. Yes, All right, then why didn't you get the implication on it? Because I was hard-pressed to receive an implication from that. I don't see how his gestalt philosophy led to adultery. Well, whether you see Where's it or the not. connection? Where's the connection? Well, you go look at what he said regarding this gestalt philosophy. It's what it teaches. It's not. It, it's a no, therapy I, idea. I know what he said. Uh, wait. You don't know what he said. I know what he said. So I, I, I have here Brother Metter's personal words. You have speculation. No, I don't. Yes, sir. No, sir. You have. Hold on. No, you sir. have speculation. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll run the show. Yes, or you sit down. It'll be the end of the whole thing right now. I, I submit to you. Well, I'm glad you do because you're going to have to. Okay. Is, there, is that true of everybody else? That's here? fine. All right. Now, what I'm saying is I can know the therapy and the idea behind it and what guides it and where it leads you. That's what I said. Now, the reason we study these things, the same way you reason you study it, is to learn where people come from when they occupy those positions. I also knew about his positions on Eastern philosophy and viewpoints. I knew about those things. Now, what does that tell me? Why study it unless it gives me information, it gives me insights into what he does? Why don't you study it? So when you went up there and you got these statements from him, evidently that absolved all things. Am I right? No. But you defended him, you spoke with him. No, sir, I didn't defend him. But you spoke with him and you showed that there was no I problem. I spoke with him out of love and concern for a brother who was obviously associated. No, I mean, when you spoke on the Shenandoah lectures, what kind of message does that say? Concerning? Well, we spoke on the Shenandoah lectures based upon this letter. That's my point. Yes, we, we at that time had clarified as far as we were concerned. I know issue. as far as you're concerned. Yes. But it's obvious you know what you're talking about. Okay, well. In yeah, order, I say that in kindness, yes, but sir. I mean that. Yes, sir. That's fine. We don't take offense yeah. to that. Now, but let, let me speak now. The fact of the matter is, those things that you say you knew about Joseph Metter, from where did you receive that information? You said you knew about his Eastern philosophy. Where did you get that evidence? I got it basically from going to the, before this ever came up, if you're referring to Kevin. Yes, sir. I went to the internet and looked it up. You looked and it I up. paid the first place. How come you didn't bring it out? Brother, have you ever read back in about 1981 or 82 or 83, somewhere along in there, the spiritual sword when it dealt with the psychology, the philosophy behind psychology? You were reading things back in those days. Yes, sir. You were in 1982 and 83. I can read them now, but that, I, no, 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 no. That has nothing to do with Joseph Matter. Oh, yes, it does. It does. In 1983. Listen to me. Yes, and sir. Go ahead. Saying. Go ahead. My words will give you the information. Go ahead. You can't know until you hear me. Go ahead. All right. They dealt with psychology, Brother Warren saw fit to do so, mm -hmm. and he dealt with the philosophies behind psychology, and he gave us some insights into those things at that time. Now, just being the old dumb boy I am, when I found out Joseph Metter was into gestalt therapy and having a little bit of education under my own belt, mm -hmm. I went back and looked into it, and I wondered how can Joseph Metter be a faithful Christian, much less a faithful gospel preacher, and occupy the position of that. I then went on the Internet, and I didn't know he was doing anything on it. Mm -hmm. And I began to look these particular things up and dealt with them, began to study it and look at it. And it was about that time then that he came out with all this other material. Okay. But as far as the Gestalt therapy and its uh, principle being in harmony with the New Testament, I knew about that a long time ago, and several of us were already raising questions. You okay. just didn't know we were raising okay. about what, the whole thing. What connection between that what you just said how did you make the connection between that and Brother Metter? At what point in time specifically did you make the time I found out about it and began to, to study it, I don't know whether it was four years ago or five or three or what. I don't so, remember. So right. in your mind you had already said Joseph Metter is a false teacher or a false Christian living in false... I'd already considered that, yes. Okay, so what about Joseph Metter prompted you to say, well, Joseph Metter is involved in this? What did you see? What evidence? How did you come to the conclusion? When you say that, involved in what? In the Gestalt therapy. At what time did you become aware that Joseph Metter was involved in Gestalt therapy? Uh, I don't know how to say any more than years ago. Years ago? So, so he never covered it up. He's been on. He's been online for yes. how long? Okay. So at the point that you identified that Brother Metter was not right, why didn't you begin to warn other brethren until? Kevin Townsend put out his packet, then obviously everybody started to 
Okay. Maybe. Okay, we got. I could ask several here, but I'll, you're operating on your limited finite knowledge. And when I do what I do, is since we don't communicate much, you don't know what I do when I do it, do you? Well, I'm asking you a question. Uh, yes, sir. You for are. the information. But you're based on the assumption that because you didn't know when I did it, I must not know what to do or when no, I did it. No, sir. I'm not yes, making an argument on from ignorance. No, sir. I'm not. Well, then, what's the purpose of it? The purpose is to establish that what you're saying does not coincide with the facts, and you're you, you're forcing. You're forcing the issue to try to uh, to make it appear that you actually and did years before Kevin Townsend put this out, already in your mind you had Joseph Metter as a false brother, when in actuality you did not. You are arguing for argument's sake. Sir. And instead of sir, being honest sir, and owning up sir, to the fact sir, that you Sir, shut up right now. now. I can't get you to shut up any other way. I'm asking you to shut up. He told me to shut up. Is that is that Christian decorum? Is that Christian decorum? Is that Christian decorum? Christian decorum? The elder, the elder of the Spring Church of Christ said that we're going to be treated with Christian decorum. The definition. Is it right for Brother Brown to tell me to shut up? Is that in keeping with Christian decorum? I'll answer that when you answer my question. Is it right for him to tell me to shut up? He's demonstrating his Christianity. Is it right for him to tell me to shut up? Is it right for him to tell me to shut up? It's right. It's right for him to tell me to shut up. Just a minute. Just a minute. I'm fine. But, uh, I know. The, the point is, yeah, the yeah, point is, is, is I, I, want, on, I want to be treated with a fair standard. Well, I think you want to ask me to yeah. shut up. That is a violation of Christian decorum. Yeah. I beg your pardon. Decorum. No, sir. Decorum. Uh, who has a dictionary in here? Anybody have a dictionary? Look up the word decorum. Uh, please ignore him. He doesn't run this. He's trying to right now, and he's demonstrating exactly the same thing he's trying to condemn. He's practicing right now what he's trying to condemn. He's doing it as quick as he can. He's showing no respect for Brother Ken or the rest of the elders. They delegate to me that. When I come up here and people get through when they're preaching and they send me to come up here and sit down, that's beginning to tell them to shut up. And you can ask anyone here and you'll find out I've told them to shut up. Justify yourself, rationalize. Well, what are you doing, Israel? You study your What are you doing, Israel? 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 Okay. Hang on, hang on, sir. I, I submit to, to your statement, but I disagree that I have been treated with with Christian decorum when a man tells me to shut up. Okay, let us proceed then. Okay. Now I, I want to make sure. So Go very clear. Go ahead. When people do not touch. When I asked them to, under the authority of the elders that were given me as the director of this open forum, what am I supposed to do to get somebody who's going to talk no matter what and trying to get them to conduct themselves according to what would you do? I wouldn't tell them to shut up. What would you do? I would just be quiet. And let them take over. And know until they finish. Maybe he had a maybe had a point that he needed to make. But that's kind of controlling this, and you don't control this. Philippians. You don't control this. Philippians chapter 2 says... Okay, let's go on over here, if you will, come up here. Because it's obvious he practices something other than he preaches. Let me take this away, please. Kevin Townsend. Not looking to your own self, but the thing of others. All right, I don't want to see it. Thank you. Thank you. I want to make something clear. If Kevin or anybody else gets up here and starts to bus, trust me, I'm going to shut him up. I don't want you to holler at me. Please, don't holler at me. That's right, me. because you don't occupy the position they already put me in. And it's obvious you wouldn't even listen to Brother uh, Paul up here, would you? You're about the standard. His name is Kevin Townsend from the New Braunfels Church Christ. I'll tell you right now, I'm glad this is happening, brethren. Now you can see exactly what some of us have put up with on three different phone calls from him. Amen. 
Amen. And I have a phone call recording. They can listen so they can hear. That's fine. That's exactly fine. I have no problem. This is all recorded too. Yes, I'm saying though is if uh, you do have them recorded, you know, we don't know that you're looking public anyway because you copyright everything. And, 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 okay, and I, I just want you to know that uh, these proceedings are not copyrighted, uh, they're open to the public. And if you have phone conversations, uh, you know, we ask that you waive your copyright, and I'm sure you, you've got it copyrighted. But you don't put out anything that you copyright. My name is copyright. It's copyright. Right oh, by the way, let me ask one question. Just out of curiosity. No, one question. Uh, no, you're not. You're going to sit down and be quiet. If you're going to ask me a question, I'm going to stand up here. That's what, that's what well, I want to ask all three of you this. I'll stand up here. All three, I'll be there. all three of you. You all three get up here? Spokesman, I will speak okay, for yeah, them. Well, let, yeah. let, me, uh, let me say this. I'm glad, I'm glad that you said that. That's exactly fine. Well, you're not I'm picking up on it. You understand that, that uh, David is our designated moderator. So I would appreciate it out of respect for the ownership here, to also respect David. All right. And we have respected him up to this point, so he told me to shut up. How can you show a man respect when, when you demean me in that fashion? Well, then be quiet. Does that help you? I will be quiet. Okay. That doesn't answer the fact that you told me to shut up. When are you going to be quiet? Uh, right now. How long? As long as you want me to. Anyway, answer that question. <laughs> Do you represent the policy and position of the BDO members? We are here. I ask that question yes or no. We are here by their permission. And thus they endorse your statements in your position as the Beefield Elders in the position of the Beefield Church of Christ. As far as it is within, within reason, within no, authority. Well, how are they going to support everything we say? What if we, at a moment's notice, uh, do something that is contrary to the will of God? We can't expect faithful elders to go with us. I mean, I, I'm sure later on when Brother Cohn goes home, he's not going to say that he agrees with you telling me to shut up. You were out of line then. No one. Yes, you were, sir. Hey, yes, you were. Hey, hey uh, what did you say a minute ago about that? Speak to the issue. Yes, speak to the issue. I yeah. see a lot of diverting. Yeah, you brought it back up. I've seen a lot of you green right wood being burnt. You brought it right back up. And a lot of smoke you being it right back up. produced. You, you know, you got a little problem with authority regardless of where it comes from. Yes, sir. Right. Well. Now, whether it's shut up, be quiet, or please, or whatever. No, those are all different terms. Those are all different terms with different connotations. Have you ever talking about shut up? Those are all different terms with any connotations. <laughs> okay. Israel, I, I know that... Uh, Is he going to ask me a question or not? Well, that's it? Excuse me a minute. That's it. That's I'm going to tell, tell you to shut up if, if, okay. he, uh, if you don't keep quiet. Oh, horrors, horrors. Honest brother, here's no way to happen. And I would say, uh, yes, that's, that's correct. That's uh, right. I know, Israel, by your uh, uh, conduct here, you said that you would respect the eldership. In your own opinion, yes. But I wasn't, I wasn't asking your opinion. Your parsing of every statement, every word that we make, really is to serve your own uh, opinion of yourself, I think. Now, I'm sure you disagree with that, but uh, that, that's certainly the, uh, the uh, uh, opinion that I have. Because every time we say anything, you'll take one word, two words, three words, and say they're not the same. Even though the, even though the impact of them is exactly the same. No, sir. I, I, I expect that. I expect that you disagree with it. Is it daylight or dark? Is it daylight? No, he disagrees with it. Go ahead and let him talk. Okay. Kevin Townsend, New Braunfels Church of Christ. Um, I just want to give a little background, and I want to want to say something with regards to what Israel said. The uh, the CD that I put together uh, came. What he said was, for the most part, accurate. A couple of little minor differences. Uh, the woman that uh, prompted this was not elderly. She was the wife of a deacon, about 30 years old. But basically, what he said was was accurate. Um, she was convinced that Joseph met her uh, was the end all to be all and saw no problem with Gestalt. 
And I knew he was involved in Gestalt, but I really didn't know a lot about it. And as I began to research the matter, I began to realize how deep and dark Gestalt was, and I began to find out what Anandamaya Yoga was. And I put this all together over a period of months and actually published it. It was not a personal uh, complaint against Joseph, Joseph Metter, but a compilation of all the things that was publicly available on the matter. Uh, and I put it together and, and put it out there so that people could understand exactly the true nature of what Joseph Metter was involved in. The one thing that I think that Israel uh, did not cover was our, I, I recall two conversations with him, that longer one in the beginning that he described to you, but he didn't mention the second conversation that he had with me. The second conversation was after he came back with the letter. And he called me, uh, at that time I was working as an insurance agent, and he said, I have this letter from Joseph Metter, and the things are okay now. Joseph and I and the family went up there, the, the Rodriguez's, and, and of course, to my recollection, I've never met him till today. To the best of my recollection, I've never met him or the, or the Rodriguez's till today. Um, I just received this call from him where he, he described where he preached and what he was intending to do. Um, I didn't know Frank character at that time. He described there was a person in his congregation that was very upset by some of the things going on and they were investigating these things. And I was just happy to help with whatever I could at the time. So I didn't, I didn't really know the, the players in this situation. But the second call that came in after his visit to see Joseph Metter in Austin, he didn't describe that, that call to you. And during the second call, he said, I've got this letter, uh, we've all signed it, and Joseph, this was, you know, uh, Joseph was just using these things for like training or for educational purposes. And, you know, don't worry, it's all okay. And I said, well, well, send me a copy of it. I can't do that. I said, what do you mean you can't do that? Well, we have an agreement with Joseph that this is not going to be released. I said, well, can you fax it to me, email it to me, you know, scan it in, whatever. No. He says, you're one of the principal people involved. You're allowed to see it. And left, he left me with the impression that not everyone was allowed to see it, but only the people involved, the people that were complaining about it, the people like him and his family members and myself, since I was the one that did the CD, were allowed to see it, but it was not for general public consumption. And I, and I said, well, how am I supposed to see this letter? Well, you've got to come down to Beeville to see it. I said, I'm not driving to Beeville. And so his statement that this was never restricted or never is, is patently false. He said it to me on the phone, and I, I was never going to drive to Beeville. As far as I'm concerned, that evidence that was, was hidden was no evidence at all. So regardless of what he's trying to tell you today, that was never conveyed to me that way. Now, he's willing to release it today, apparently, but that was not the way it was up until today. Was that phone conversation recorded? Oh, okay. And when I, later when we uh, became members at the New Braunfels Church of Christ and I bumped into Frank Carragher, I found out that Frank was the person that was part of this. And we, as we began to compare notes, uh, I found in talking with Frank that Frank had seen this letter, but it was as restricted in release as, as I was told on the phone call. Only Frank was able to see it, but nobody else was able to see it there, and he was only able to see it in the office, and, I, and from what I understand from Frank, not even his wife was able to see it. So what he's trying to tell you today, that this was a general release type thing, anybody could see it, not true. Yep, we'll just keep in mind what we've already said. If I come up here and I say what Brother Townsend said is completely false, how will we ever know? If his word against mine, if Brother Carragher's word against mine, the fact of the matter is we told people they could see it, but they had to come to be able to see it, and anyone else involved in this issue could see it or anyone who wanted to know about this issue could see it. So what Brother Kevin Townsend said is inaccurate and it's not the truth. As a matter of fact, if it was the truth, then we wouldn't be here ready to show it. Uh, now, we're not going to make copies of it. If you brought it to We're Spain, not going to make copies of it. You, we, will see, we will show it to, the, uh, to everybody's eyeballs. If you want to read it, we'll be more than glad to let you read it, but we're not going to make copies of it. Why? Yeah, because can, you we, on, can you put it on over here? Because we made an agreement with Brother Metter, and though he has proven himself to be false, we intend to keep that agreement. 
So you don't mind the resident had to pass we it don't, around? We don't mind making a transparency of it and showing it on an overhead. Don't you think we well, don't mind doing that? That's a little kind of peculiar because well, by implication that is passing it around. Well, well, nothing. Don't equivocate. That's passing it around. The fact of the matter is, the point is that we will allow anyone to see it, and what Brother Townsend said is that we're not willing to let anyone see it, and that is not right. That's the point. Now, whether I show it on the overhead or pass it around, and you want to make now who's quibbling on little points about what they mean. The fact of the matter is, we're, we're willing to let people see it. That's the point. I'd like to let Ken speak here just for a minute. I just want to follow up with what Ken Townsend said. Ken Chumley from Beverly, South Carolina. I was here last year at the lectureship. I spoke to Frank and Grace Cargo and I knew about the letter. I also had communication with another sister in that area who had seen the letter. She was talking to me about these issues. And uh, I don't have a permission to name, but if necessary, that would come up. But I do want to say this. I emailed her about getting a copy of that letter to see since I was in South Carolina. She responded to me that I could not get a copy of it. Now you're saying you're willing to have it looked at now. But why keep a letter of this nature that supposedly clears somebody from being public unless there was a reason that would not validate the truth that was in there. Why was Joseph Mehta not wanting the world to know? Or you. Or you. Why did you make the pact with him, sir? It doesn't matter. It's, it, it, and you have to respect the uh, Excuse me. There was a pact made between you and Brother Meta to keep this letter from going public that would either resolve the situation or expose it even more. Let, let what your reasoning was, I don't know. Excuse, but there was a pact. Excuse, excuse me, Meta. Can I ask if this was a uh, unilateral pact or a bilateral pact? This was a pact between all people who were present in the meeting, myself, Joshua, Eddie, and Joseph Metter. Now, the, the, the fact of the matter is, Brother Metter is not the one who said, we cannot make copies. We're the ones who said that. Why? Because it didn't involve anyone else at that time. We, we were dealing with Frank Carriger, we were dealing with Kevin Townsend, and those two men, along with Frank Carriger's wife, the reason she didn't see it, as Brother uh, uh, Townsend stated, because she was having problems with her eyes at that time. Okay. That's why she didn't read it. But we said, Frank Carriker read it, he read it. We let uh, Brother Townsend read it if he wanted to come since he put the packet together. And anyone else who was directly involved with this situation, we would allow to read it. And if anyone got word of Brother Kevin Townsend's pack and wanted to see it, they could see it as well. But well, we weren't going to send it. Can I ask a question? Hey, I still want to get back to this uh, pack, which I assume by pack you mean a, an agreement. An agreement. I agree, and, and Joseph agrees that you all apply yes. certain terms of the agreement. Uh, but, you, I, I, but you keep saying that it was not Joseph that said you couldn't copy it. It was you and your brothers yes. that said you couldn't copy it. Yes. So that was not in the agreement. Is that correct? It was the fact that you would not copy it. That was not in the agreement. So the, the agreement. Maybe you could just. Uh, uh, well, are you going to let me answer a question, or are you going to keep on asking questions? I want, I want to kind of, kind of uh, tell you how I want you to answer it. Okay, tell me the how detail. you want me to answer the detail. it. You want to tell me you how you want me to answer it. Delineate the terms of the agreement. Specify delineate. the terms of the agreement. Brother Metter, I'm going to react it for you, okay? Redact it. React it, okay? A react? Brother, I'm going to react it. Okay. Yes. Re-enact it. Thank you, Brother McClish. Okay. Brother Matter, we will not make copies of this for anyone, but we will let anyone who is directly involved with the situation see it. That, that's fine, Brother Rodriguez. You, you do what you think. That those are my beliefs. Oh, okay, wait a minute. You said, okay, Brother, I meant that Brother Rodriguez, you do what you think is best, right? No, he didn't say you do what you think is best. He said you do what you think is what? You do what you think is necessary with okay, it. Okay, you do what you think is necessary. Yes. 
So you still think it's necessary not to talk to him? Yes. And why is that? Circumstances because, change because the disclosure has been made about his First uh, of all, let me tell you why. First of all, in David Meder, I mean David Brown's uh, invitation, he specifically states that the letter from that the letter from Meder is a moot point. So why make a big thing about it if it's a moot point? The fact of the matter the fact of the matter is, we can make a transparency of it. We can show it for everyone to read it, and then be done with it. Why are we quibbling? and niggling over these little matters. That's exactly. Why are we quibbling over these little matters? We need to go on to... Well, why are we going to release it? Well, let me read it. Can I read it? Why? Is that acceptable? And then, and then I'll, I'll, have, I'll have Brother West here affirm that that is Brother Meadow's signature. If you let me have it, we'll put it, continue I'll, with that. I'll have Brother West here <laughs> affirm that's exactly why we didn't want you to get it. Why? Because why? this is not for your tearing apart when you don't even know everything that was involved with us. Tearing apart? Yes, sir. Tearing apart? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keep on. You're doing well. Now, now I will read it if, if people want me to, to read it. It's a, moot, me, it's a moot point. Brother Metter is an adulterer. We went to speak to Brother Metter uh, after, but after he was addressed marked. this. Oh, go ahead and read your letter and then please okay. would you silence yourself. What would you like me to do? Read the letter. Okay. And read it distinctly. Okay. And let it know that it's going out over the airwaves and being recorded. That's fine. Okay. You can go back and transcribe this if you want, but you're not going to get a copy from us. <laughs> <laughs> this is maturity at its best. Yes. No, at its best was when you told me to shut up. That's right. You have it yet. Yes. Yes. Do you want to hear this? Do you read want to hear this? Read it distinctly. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. After a personal meeting with Joseph Metter, he has given the following response to our questions. I have studied Oriental philosophy and art since 1968 and have had a recorded academic interest in the study of comparative religions. All of my study has helped me formulate my belief that Christianity, as taught in the New Testament, is not just a path to God, but indeed the only path to God through Jesus Christ. Authentic New Testament Christianity must be based upon the primary teachings of Jesus Christ. John chapter 12, verses 48 through 50. Without the addition of human religious tradition or dogma. Point number one. I do not advocate or endorse the teaching of secular humanism. I have studied secular humanism at the graduate level at the State University of New York, where I attended lectures by Dr. Paul Kurtz, a noted secular humanist and co-author of Humanist Manifesto II, as well as owner of Prometheus Press. I never personally endorsed the basic tenets of secular humanism. Subpoint number two under point number one. Perennialism is an, is an educational theory that I have held to in principle since 1980. The view of education stresses that there exists a historical lineage of great books of the Western world which form the framework of classical education. Subpoint number three under number one. Transpersonalism stresses that our values must be taken outside of the self to other people. This is, a, this is exactly what the New Testament Christianity teaches, in that we must take the gospel to others, whereas some religions stress the self and affirm that all answers are to be found within the self. A transpersonal view of Christianity, which the New Testament teaches, is that the answers are outside of each individual and are rooted in the Bible, and that the gospel of Jesus Christ must be taken beyond the self and taught to all of those with whom we come into contact. Subpoint number four under point number one. I personally hold that the Bible only is the only book which guides mankind to salvation in Christ Jesus. I personally hold that the Bible is God's inspired, inerrant, and infallible word, and that we shall be judged by the teachings of Jesus, John 12, 48. My personal belief regarding God's word is a matter of public, written, and spoken record spanning 25 years of full-time ministry. Point number two, 
I began studying Gestalt therapy in 1977 and I found the basic theoretical framework to pose no conflict of interest to me in my study, understanding and practice of fundamental New Testament Christianity. Today, many teachings are called Gestalt, which are not rooted in traditional Gestalt psychology and theory, represented in the works of Wolfgang Kohler, Kirk Kafka, Kirk Lewin, and Kirk Goldstein. Point number three. My professional academic memberships in educational organizations were brief, one to two years, and helped to further my own research within professionals in the field. I never participated in or endorsed various subgroups within the organizations that advocated an anti-Christian practice. Such subgroups are also a part of professional memberships, membership organizations such as the American Bar Association and the American Medical Association. Certainly, no one would accuse every lawyer or physician with endorsing the beliefs of every subgroup within the ABA or AMA. I still maintain full possessional membership in the American Philosophical Association, the primary academic society for philosophy. Point number four, I have studied and practiced a non-Hindu, non-Buddhist form of yoga since 1976 as a physical system of health, maintenance, with no religious or spiritual attachment, signed Joseph Metter, Edifonso Rodriguez, Joshua R. Rodriguez, and Israel Rodriguez, February the 12th, 2007. Yeah, that does it for me. Uh, let me ask a question. Um, in this meeting that you and your family had with Joseph Metter, am I, am I going to get to ask a question or are all the questions going to be directed at me? Well, one is the one I'm asking. Well, the fact of the matter is you have asked me already three or four questions, and I want to have an opportunity to continue to explain. What, those, well, keep those questions in originally, mind. Keep those questions in Originally, mind. David, we'll Brother tomorrow. David Brown said to read this letter and then to explain it. Okay, to well, explain let me what, how we got it. Now you're asking me another question. Yeah, I'm asking you another question. You got that right. I'm glad you understood that. Mockings, this meeting with, uh, Joseph mockings and ridicule, did the subject of David Miller supercilious ever come up? comments and facetiousness. Did, did the subject my, of David Miller ever come up? You have to repeat the question. <laughs> You're right, I do. If you would just listen. No, sir. If you During the meeting with Joseph Metter and, and, and making supercilious comments which have no place in this, which have no place in this. A am I going to have to repeat it a third time? You may. You may. He will if he wants to. Well, well. During the meeting with Joseph Metter, I want you to listen now. Focus on me. Yes, sir. Okay? During the meeting with Joseph Metter, focus on me. During the meeting with Joseph Metter, did the subject of David Miller ever come up? We asked Brother Metter a question about David Miller, yes. So the answer is yes. Yes. And, and you do have a CD about David Miller. Which CD? The one that Brother Hatcher put together? Yes. The one that has incomplete letters? The one that's unprofessionally right. produced? So that's, that the one that has incomplete letters? Yes, I have. You have that one. Okay. I have the one that, that has issues in it that are non-coherent. I, I tell you this, yeah, we have really gone beyond the uh, time limit. I want to say this, that uh, you know, I really appreciate the fact that you have come here today. What? i got one more question. Well, I want to be, I want, I want to have the, I want to have. We're 10 minutes over time. Can it, uh, can it wait till tomorrow? Okay. Am I gonna Am I gonna be allowed tomorrow. to speak tomorrow? Oh yes, yes. Okay. Definitely. Are you being facetious or are you being genuinely sincere about that? Well, what do we find out tomorrow? Uh, sir, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the elder. I, I'm, I'm not wait, talking wait, to you. I'm wait, talking wait, to the wait, elder. Wait, wait, wait. He's the elder. You don't. Oh, you don't usurp the elder's authority. I'm not usurping anybody. I'm not speaking to you. I was speaking sir, to the elder. Sir, sir, sir. We'll find out. Just tomorrow. have a seat. We'll find out tomorrow. See. We'll find out tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, thank now, you, now, elders listen, of the Spring Church of Christ. Listen, again, I want to say that I appreciate you all three coming. Because a lot of those that are opposed to uh, uh, truth by their, by their actions will not come. Another reason is that uh, before we began this, I was extremely sleepy. I'm not sleepy anymore. I want to ask Ken and Brother Buddy, and our third elder's not here right now. Was I put in this position with authority delegated to me to run this thing? 
I want you to hear that because you have no problem hearing sometimes. You talk to other people for doing on I want to know that. Do I have the authority to do this? Sir? No, you be quiet now. I won't say shut up. Just be quiet now. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. Yeah, hold your peace. Let me have a nice thing, please. Okay. You, well, you may, you may get to speak. You may. But I want to make something clear to all three of you and anybody else here. I haven't usurped anybody's authority. I acted by delegated authority to these elders. I want to read you something that is in the, that's put right here. Uh, yes, sir, I know, but we're running the show. You'll sit there and listen or you can get up and leave. Well, you might, and I, I, we, you might, and you may tomorrow. Here's what we said in this open forum. It was here for you to read, and it's in print. That seems to make a difference. Open forum. This is our welcome. Welcome to our guests. You're our guests. You're our visitors. You're to conduct yourself according to what we set up. All right. Here's exactly what it says at the bottom of it. Did you pick up one of these before you came in here? Well, you might have should have. We want our open forum sessions to be conducted decently in order. The elders of the spring congregation operating through the director of the lectureship or whomever the director designates to be in control of the forum will have the final authority in guiding the open forum. Now, what is there you don't understand about this? So you're saying in that letter that you're... Uh, what is there you don't understand about this? So you're saying that your authority supersedes the elders when they give you that authority? Brother Eddie, we'll recognize you in time. Now we know where the sun gets you. And, mm -hmm. and I'm saying okay. this. Okay. That whenever we the elders give authority to the priest, we're dismissed. Thank you very much. And that came from an elder before I ever seen anything about it. <laughs>